Understanding Radio Interoperability Presented by Suffolk County Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services Radio interoperability can be defined as the ability of public safety units and personnel from different agencies and disciplines to share or communicate information in real time when needed and as authorized for an incident or event. Radio interoperability is not the ability of every provider to be able to communicate with every other provider at any time and without coordination. Unregulated communication can lead to confusion, endanger providers, and ultimately be counterproductive. There are a number of different obstacles to achieving interoperability. This list includes, but is not limited to, responders operating on differing radio bands. Public safety radio bands include low-band VHF, high-band VHF, UHF including the T-band, and the 7 and 800 MHz band, responders operating on different radio channels or frequencies, carrying radio equipment that is incompatible with other public safety systems, a failure to use a standard naming convention, resulting in responders' inability to find the correct channel. Departments are discouraged from using local or out-of-date names for the channels. Lastly, inadequate training of responders on the proper navigation of the radio can result in an inability to find the channels. APCO International, in association with NIPSTIC, the National Public Safety Telecommunications Council, has developed a standard naming convention for the national interoperable radio channels. The standard naming configuration is comprised of four parts beginning with the spectrum band, then the channel use designator, followed by the unique channel number, and lastly, sometimes, a modifier. The spectrum band identifier is a single alpha or numeric character to designate the public safety spectrum the channel is found within. They are L for VHF low band channels, V for VHF high band channels, U for UHF channels including the T band channels, the number 7 for the 700 MHz public safety band, and an 8 for the 800 MHz band. The channel use designator is a three or four digit place tag used to signify the primary purpose of operations on the channel. In some cases, the channel use has been specified in FCC rules or related orders. These tags include, but are not limited to, AG, for air to ground operations, call, designating a hailing or calling channel, fire, a channel reserved primarily for fire incidents and agencies, GTAC, for use by public safety agencies to communicate with non-governmental agencies such as a power company or the American Red Cross. The designator law is reserved for police and law enforcement use exclusively, while MED indicates a channel provided for EMS use. And lastly, TAC, which is a channel that can be used by any eligible public safety agency regardless of discipline. The unique channel identifier is a one or two digit place tag that identifies the specific channel. This number never repeats in the interoperability channel scheme. If a new frequency becomes available, it will be given the next unique channel identifier in the series. The modifier is a single alphanumeric designation used to identify a modification, or change, to the default operation. Most commonly, this will be a D, indicating a direct or talk-around configuration of a normally designated repeater channel. Okay, let's review what we have learned so far. Let's look at example number one, 8 call 90. We see that this channel is in the 800 megahertz band. This channel is primarily used for hailing or calling. Its unique channel number is 90, the only channel numbered 90 in the plan. In the second example, UTAC 43, we see that this channel is in the UHF band. It is used primarily as a tactical or operations channel. Its unique number in the interoperability scheme is 43. It is being used in direct, talk-around mode. The National Interoperability Unique Channel Numbering begins with the number 1, L-Law 1, and currently ends with the number 94, 8-TAC-94-D. Not every number in between is used, allowing room for additional channels to be added in each band as needed in the future. Any traditional public safety entity, police, fire, or EMS, holding an FCC Part 90 license is eligible under a blanket authorization, 
to utilize the national interoperability channels. Because of this wide authorization, it is necessary to coordinate I.O. channel use. Suffolk County Fire Rescue is the regional agency responsible for coordinating interoperable channel use for the fire and EMS service. Suffolk County Police Department fills the same role for local law enforcement agencies. Fire and EMS agencies can request immediate access to I.O. channels through one of two ways, calling the FRES duty supervisor or hailing FRES via the trunked radio system. Law enforcement request for use should be coordinated through the Suffolk County Police Duty Officer. These two agencies will work collaboratively with the region to ensure coordination and deconflict any interrupt channel usage. Non-emergency requests for use of an I.O. channel for a drill or event should be requested in advance. All agencies are encouraged to incorporate radio operations and radio training into all drills and training sessions. While specific interop channels should not be listed in a pre-plan since availability for particular channel cannot be guaranteed, departments should still consider adding generalized interoperable channel usage language into all pre-planning. The Suffolk County Communications Unit, or COMU, is comprised of employees from the SCPD Technical Services Section and the FRES Communications Bureau. This team can help support incident and event interoperability through not only coordination of the national interop channels but with mobile communications vehicles, cash radio equipment, portable repeaters, gateways, mobile broadband kits, and point-to-multipoint microwave links. Additionally, personnel can assist in the development of an incident or event communication plan commonly referred to as the ICS-205. Let's review the basic tenet of interoperability now. Radio Interoperability Interoperability is the ability of units and personnel from different agencies and disciplines to share information in real time when needed and as authorized for an incident or event. Radio interoperability is not the ability of every provider to be able to communicate with every other provider at any time and without coordination. The interoperability continuum is a tool designed to assist emergency response agencies and policymakers to plan and implement interoperability solutions for data and voice communications. This tool identifies five critical success elements that must be addressed to achieve a sophisticated interoperability solution. Agencies can use the interoperability continuum to track their progress in strengthening interoperable communications. Links to SafeCom and the Communications Continuum can be found on the Communications page of the FRES website under the For Responders section. There are five basic elements to achieving success in the Communications Continuum. They are governance, standard operating procedures, technology, training and exercises, and usage. Governance. Through the governance framework, Public safety stakeholders make numerous important decisions to plan, fund, procure, implement, support, and maintain communication systems, and eventually replace and dispose of obsolete systems and components. Suffolk County has made significant investments in the infrastructure to support interoperable communication, and the work continues. Governing bodies include not only state and county governments, but those of local fire districts, companies, and volunteer ambulance agencies. Standard Operating Procedures Through standard operating procedures, agencies should develop joint SOPs for routine mutual aid events and incidents. The development of SOPs for planned events and emergency-level response that are developed as agencies continue to promote interoperability. The region sets region-wide communication standards for multi-agency, multi-discipline, multi-hazard responses. Suffolk County maintains a robust infrastructure to support these type incidents through VHF, UHF, and county trunked system resources. And lastly, National Incident Management System integrated SOPs and regional SOPs are molded to conform to the elements of the national system. Technology. Technology is a critical tool for improving interoperability, but it is not the sole driver of an optimal solution. Successful implementation of data and voice communications technology is supported by strong governance and is highly dependent on effective collaboration and training among participating agencies and jurisdictions. Technology should meet the needs of practitioners on the front lines and should address regional needs, existing infrastructure, and sustainability. 
Many times, a combination of technologies is necessary to provide effective communications among emergency responders. Technologies not easily understood or enacted by boots-on-the-ground responders are ineffective. Understanding is key. Training and Exercises Implementing effective training and exercise programs to practice communications interoperability is essential for ensuring that the technology works and responders are able to effectively communicate during emergencies. Public safety personnel require training and exercises to develop the knowledge, skills, abilities, and mindset to use their communications resources to achieve interoperability, regardless of discipline or level of government in a given area. A broad level of participation builds familiarity, trust, and understanding about available resources and capabilities. Effective training and exercises should be developed and executed using existing SOPs. We would recommend first responders be required to train and retrain on radio operations as part of their continuing education requirements. Usage. Usage refers to how often interoperable communications technologies are used. Success in this element is contingent upon progress and interplay among the other four elements on the interoperability continuum. Usage at planned events. Usage at localized emergency events. Events that involve multiple intrajurisdictional responding agencies. Regional incident management, which is routing coordination of responses across a region that include mutual aid, intrajurisdictional and or interdisciplinary responses, as well as responses to natural and man-made disasters. Ultimately, the frontline responder must be familiar with interoperable channel capabilities, how to and when to access them, how to find them in their radio, and how to properly utilize them is essential. Takeaways for responders and response agencies. Administrators, commissioners, directors, chiefs, and district managers should ensure that all radios have the national interop channels programmed in them. Please note that radios programmed onto the county trunk system will be returned with the national interoperable channels programmed in them, based on the capabilities of the radio. If the radio is single band, it will be programmed with the 7 and 800 interop channels. If it's a multiband radio, it will have all interop channels corresponding to the bands available. Ensure that radios are programmed with the correct naming convention. And lastly, ensure that department members are familiar with their channels and trained in their use. Department members should review radio operations regularly, ensuring that they know what channels are in the radio and how to find them. Understand how to request the use of interoperable channels, and finally ask to incorporate them into your next department training. For more information on interoperability in Suffolk, please reach out to Michael Postel, Director of Police Communications at Suffolk County Police Department, or Gregory Miniuti, Chief of Communications at Suffolk County Fire Rescue at the emails provided below.